Today I'm here at The Herbert in Coventry with curator Ali Wells. Um, thank you for meeting me here today, Ali. Uh, we've got quite a variety of interesting objects to discuss and I'm really excited because I think through these objects you can really see the relevancy to the modern world. Um, so first, I believe that we have an ancient ear scoop, is that right? We do. We just get out of its little box because it is really small and quite thin, so I don't know it's easier to see there. Yeah. So this is um, an ear scoop. We think it's probably Roman, but it could be as recent as medieval, so it's still at least sort of uh, 1500, perhaps, you know, 2000 years old. And I don't know you can see here, there's just a tiny, like, it's a tiny little spoon at the end with a barley twist along the shaft and a pointed end, which probably would be for either picking bits out of your teeth or for your nails. Okay. Um, but the ear scoop itself is probably the bit you perhaps most recognise yeah. from today. And I have brought a modern example that we all might have at home. And um, this is actually a slightly more sustainable one with the bamboo uh, stick rather than plastic. But this would be even more sustainable still because yeah. it would be used again and again. Yeah. And the irony almost for me really is doctors today tell you not to use these in your ears uh, because it actually pushes your earwax further yeah, in. Yeah, makes it even worse. Um, whereas this perhaps could be used just to, this is the gross bit, isn't okay. it? <laughs> to scoop out that thing that's yeah. already on its way out, to okay. scoop it out. Um, so perhaps I have seen actually some reusable ones that are more like this sort of scoop design oh, really? today. So. so yeah, I guess that just shows the things that we may just have at our disposal now, but you wouldn't necessarily think that they'd evolved from thousands of years ago, right here, ancient. And it, you just think like, how did they, one, know the intricacies of every area of the body to realize that they need to clean their ears out? And I think it's quite an advanced really when you think that is a tool specifically for the kind of like fine tuning of the body, like the ears and as you were saying, the teeth, quite specific really. Absolutely, but what do you think, you know, the ancient Egyptians, the ancient Romans, they, you know, they had Roman baths, so, yeah. you know, cleanliness was important. The yeah, Egyptians it was a huge part of medicine, really, wasn't it? Just hygiene. That's yeah. it, and, you know, medicine's developing at this time, so some things work and some things don't. Yeah. Um, and they are starting to understand, and I suppose we've all had that irritating feeling where yeah. we're going to do something, and um, so they're creating tools specifically for those purposes. Yeah. Very interesting, thank you. So the next object you have here to show me is a Roman tear bottle, is that right? Um, why is it called a tear bottle for one? And can you tell me anything about maybe the dating, uh, anything behind this? Yeah, so we've um, got this Roman tear bottle, which I'll just sort of turn around and show the different and now it is it really isn't a tear bottle. Okay, is. so it doesn't hold tears or no, no, no. That was a story that sort of grew up actually quite a long time. It's probably most popular in the Victorian period. Yeah. Where mourning and sort of romantic feelings right. were really Okay, so the common. romantic like literary genre they thought, let's spin this a story. That's it, and it's quite okay. a nice idea and they were quite often found in tombs. Right. So that was sort of grew up the idea that, you know, what could it be used for? There's no obvious stoppers, you know, yeah. any liquid or anything's long gone. So yeah. what could it be used for? And that, like that idea that, you know, little reference More money. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what so people have tested the bottom of these. Right. And, and it wasn't it. No, it wasn't <laughs> okay. it. It was more like oils, so there's right. things like um, olive oils being found in okay. some different coloured pigments. So the thought is that it might be more like perfume or oils I or see, okay. things for medicinal uses, that sort of thing. And it's just like how you would leave maybe jewellery in the tomb that belonged to the person. It's just kind of another gift, is it? Well, so it could be yeah, either something they might have used um, in the tomb itself. Oh, right. I guess you could anoint the body, but they're yeah. not entirely sure actually. This is a fascinating yeah. thing about history sometimes. We don't have all the answers yet. I know, it's hard, isn't it? Because I guess something like the ear scoop, as we've just seen, it's it's kind of e easy to have an estimate, like a guess of what it may have been used for, but something like this, where it's just a glass bottle, it could, without the scientific t testing, you, your imagination could obviously run wild like people have. So there's always a chance to sort of um, look at an object and work out what it might be for from yeah. its form and function. So the wouldn't contain a lot of liquids, yeah. so it's obviously something relatively precious. Okay. Um, it, 
it's long and thin, so it's probably something that's going to pour out by um, something that would get stuck in the bottom. So, so yeah, yeah, well, I think we can, although we can't be certain, and you know, perhaps um, chemical testing would help you work out what, what was in it, but if yeah. it's been cleaned out, you never know. So, yeah, I think sort of perfumes, oils, something, something precious is the most likely. Okay. Use. And do we have any um, knowledge, of, I don't know if we have how many of these we have found, but if they were traditionally ornate or more simple, if they were served a purpose, because I know a lot of the ancient world was about maybe practicality and functionality. Yes. Well, I'll just swap this okay. out, because we do actually have four in the collection. So these are all, so this one's a little oh, bit yeah. smaller. So it's a different shape, isn't it? That's it. It's still quite long and thin, yeah. as we see, and a slightly flatter bottom, so it probably would sit quite nicely. Whereas the other one, you feel like it would have to be in a holder to keep it yes, right. Yeah. So quite, most of them are more plain, but okay. they, they can be more decorative. Yeah. So I think you've seen one with coloured glass and different designs. Oh, yes. okay. But um, the ones here with the hair bit are all relatively simple yeah. designs, almost like a test tube. Yeah, yeah, I was actually there. thinking that. It's about having like that tiny kind of bit of potion, and I guess that adds to the mystery that people were thinking what could have been in it. Was it tears? It's like this little potion tube. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have to say, I don't know how much other people cry, but take me quite a while. I have to do it at um, and certainly if you think about some of the cosmetics we use yeah. today, like serums and stuff yeah. like that, they probably come in bottles not much bigger than this. Yeah. So I think we do, we are kind of used to our lotions and potions, sometimes yeah, we don't even like small amounts. So oh yeah, that's a really tiny that's one. That's a nice one. Uh, and actually that does have a clay stopper in, so I don't know whether one day oh. someone might want to come and have a look at what's inside yeah. here. Or if it's been buried in the ground, it might just be the soil. Oh, of course, yeah. Bit. Okay. Yeah, very interesting. Thank you very much. Great, and our last object here is actually, well, it's the Egyptian amulet on a necklace, correct? But the, the necklace is an ancient, is that right? So, that's right, yeah. yeah. Like, all the beads are ancient Egyptian. Okay. So they're all, um, you know, they could be at least 3,000 years wow, old. Wow, so everything we see here is 3,000 years old. It's yes, amazing, isn't everything it? but the string they're on. Okay, so these all would have been found in Egypt, probably in a tomb setting, but um, they were found actually by an archaeologist, Batis Gunn, yeah. and he perhaps or someone had strung them into a necklace that might be more like we want wear today. Okay, so maybe a modern reinterpretation of it, kind of. Thing. Absolutely, okay. yes. And um, were these amulets worn by everyone? Was this kind of a thing that people, that was just part of your daily clothing? Or was this actually quite a luxury to have? Um, yeah, do we know if you'd have to be wealthy really to own something like this? So it's quite hard to tell because most of them are found in tombs. Yeah, we, we okay. do know they have got hooks on them so they could be worn as necklaces. Um, and there's different amulets for different functions, but this material here is called faience. Okay. And it's kind of like a ceramic, so relatively cheap to make. Right. So okay. they're all made in moulds, and they were like glazed and fired. And uh, so if you were really wealthy, yours might be made from gold or yeah, stones like lapis lazuli. Right. So, you know, okay. I think this would be quite accessible for most people. Okay, and do we have any idea if, um, they would be arranged in other kind of ways, would they have been found, these actual little figures, would they have been found on other jewellery, so they would have been on bracelets or brooches maybe? I think that's a fascinating thing that we don't know. Yeah. So, I mean, there are drawings of Egyptian tombs um, uh, that show people in life maybe wearing beaded collars, right. okay. but not so much of them wearing necessarily the amulet. So they could have gone on a bracelet, they could have gone on a necklace, some might have fittings even to be a ring. Yeah. Um, but how they would have used day to day, we do know at the sort of end of their life they're put on inside the mummy wrappings. Oh, wow, well, okay. Um, so it's come close to the body, like precious maybe. To absolutely, yeah. and, and they do not just as having an aesthetic function, they've yeah. got a protective function. So the lady here at the bottom, she's a goddess called Taweret. Okay. And she's like a hippopotamus with a crocodile tail. Right. And um, from the side, you might be able to see that she's kind of pregnant as oh, well. Oh, yeah, yeah. So she's the kind of amulet you might want to wear if you were pregnant as okay. protecting you. Right, I see. So 
It's easy kind of to dismiss um, a function with jewellery. You can just say it's for enjoyment to look pretty, but actually this may have actually held quite an important significance for an ancient uh, person, as when, especially when some stage of life such as pregnancy, this may be very closely guarded as, um, like you're saying, a protector kind of thing. Absolutely, and, and in some ways you might think of them a little bit more like people who are St Christopher's today, right, yeah. or crucifixes, yeah. that sort of thing. Um, so it's quite, uh, like, the religious connotations are quite clear, maybe. Absolutely. Yeah, or the spiritual, maybe. That's it, yeah. I mean, they, they believed in the pantheon of gods, yeah. uh, and which changed and evolved in the many yeah. thousands of years of yeah. history. <laughs> Um, but yeah, certainly, you know, I think it would have a dual function of aesthetic and protection. Okay, interesting. Thank you. So I think all these objects have kind of shown us how closely we related we are to the ancient world and that this that these ancient civilizations shouldn't be dismissed as kind of like an alien group that we don't know anything about because actually all these objects show how how um, similar our lives can kind of are really because we have jewelry that's a way of not only expressing ourselves and showing maybe showing our wealth or um, our status um, but also the idea of something being so meaningful and protecting and also the ear scoop that's so um, medically advanced really to know how um, meticulously to clean out each place of your body really I think it's just brilliant to show that this these items need to be so carefully studied, I'm sure you agree, um, because they give us such an insight into the ancient world. It's not just an ear scoop, oh, they had ears. It shows how advanced they were with medicine and hygiene and um, that they cared for themselves in the same way as we do. Um, but thank you so much for meeting me here today. And I really appreciate seeing all these interesting objects. You're welcome.